morning. Uh, I have another thank you for Ron and for Manuel because the baptistry is completely clean and balanced and beautiful. In case anybody got scared yesterday when the tornadoes came to California and they're not ready, we're ready for you this morning if you need to go there. This morning, uh, I'm going to continue in a kind of a series I've been doing because the passage of scripture that I love is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul, and we did both of those, talked about the heart, the hands got to be clean in the Jewish faith, the heart has to be clean in the Christian faith, and it's more evident from the scripture that we do know very well. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and this morning in our class we did strength, because that comes next, but I didn't really, and this morning we're going to look at love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and your mind. So this morning, I want to spend some time looking at Scripture and having some opportunity to share with you about making a decision in your head and your thoughts, in your mind. It's separate from the soul. It's separate from the body, sort of, but it's all interconnected. But we want to make sure that we're loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and our mind. And a lot of people see the mind as the inner thoughts, the emotions, the place where our, our self resides, and the thoughts that we choose. And the Bible says to set your mind on the spiritual things, not on the, on the flesh. And there's lots of passages of scriptures that I'm going to look at this morning, because I like to see the Word of God being read out loud. And if you have the Bible in front of you, you can turn with me. But as you look at these verses... Uh, it's going to emphasize that we need to make a decision. And we have to say that phrase, make up your mind. Decide today who you will follow. But as for me and my house, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. Sometimes it's a mind decision we make. We think about it. We consider the differences. We consider the odds. We consider... The promises, we roll over in our thought processes, and with our mind we decide, I'm going to choose in my heart and soul, with my mind, to serve the Lord. And then I'm going to take my flesh, and I'm going to let my flesh become obedient to my understanding, and to my spirit, and my soul, and I'm going to choose to live for Jesus. So this is what I'm, this is what I'm going for this morning. Uh, we have to uh, kind of picture in our mind these verses and let them roll around inside of us. We need to learn to feed the mind. And we thought we were talking, because it's potluck day, we were talking about the fork and the spoon. But we're not. Not this morning. Later we'll eat. But this morning we're going to focus on feeding the mind as Christians. You know, if you were going to go on a, a long cruise... Uh, on a ship and go across and see some beautiful sights and spend some time on the beach and, and go into some exotic ports and you were getting ready for it, you would get ready several months in advance. You would start saying, what do I need to take with me on the boat? What do I need to have with me when I go to that place? And we'd be packing and unpacking and repacking and setting our stuff up to have just exactly what we need at the time. Thinking through our mind, what am I going to need when I go on this great adventure? But I want to challenge us all this morning to realize that we're going to go on an adventure very soon. And we sing that song, soon and very soon, about Jesus coming. And I don't know when that's going to be, but if it's soon or if it's not soon, we need to be ready. We need to pack, put our stuff together, get our stuff together to go and be with him. And so we're going to start looking at some passages about setting our mind on things that are in eternity. We are going on an adventure, and I was trying to think of ways to stand on this earth and to think about going to be with God. And I realize he's going to come and get us, but if I was going to climb over a huge wall, and I had to stay on this side, and I had a rope and one of those grappling hooks, and I could throw that hook over the wall, and then I could climb up that wall... That, that just visualizes for me. That's what I want to be doing. I want to be climbing in my spirit toward the heavenly beings and the heavenly places. Putting my efforts into going where I'm going to be going 
and not so spend so much time just twittering away on the planet. So I want, I want us to focus and say, can we move our hearts in that direction? You know, planning to go and be there. To go there, you don't have to stack up extra changes of clothes. You don't have to put gold into a suitcase and get ready to take it with you. You don't have to uh, gather things that you will need there because all things there are provided. You don't have to purchase a house there ahead of time because the Lord has already built you one and has your name on it. He's ready for you to come. And when he's ready and he says, now, we're going to go. Those of us who are prepared in our heart, soul, mind, and strength to go and live in the presence of the Almighty God. And it will be beyond glorious. And we just have to get our head ready and our heart ready and our soul ready to go and be with him. To hear his call when he calls us and to say, yes, Lord, I'm ready to go. At any moment, I'm ready to let go of all the things I possess that are just trash and garbage compared to what is in the heaven above. Not holding on to anything of this world, but letting go and go and be with God. And so in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. And that happens so easy because we're so busy in our world taking care of business down here and making sure we have what we need for tomorrow. We're always busy, but we've got to be very careful not to overdo that. For those who live according to the flesh and set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according, living according in line with, with the thinking and the dreaming and the hoping and the loving, who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever happens in this world to our flesh will happen, but what happens to our spirit is in the hands of God. And if we have faith in God, then we have peace in knowing that he is in charge, he loves us, he's taking care of us, and he will provide. In Colossians chapter 3, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. So we have to do that on purpose, to absolutely t tell ourselves, change your thinking patterns. Take more time to dwell on things above. Spend more time in the Word of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit when He speaks to us, when we read the Word, and we can understand what God is saying. And say, I belong not to this world but the heavenly one, and someday soon I'm going to be with my Father. I am a part of the family of God, and so I'm going to live in the house of God, and I need to be ready to go and move there. I need to, to make my life on this planet more like what it will be when I go to be with God than the way you would do it if you're planning on staying here past the last day, not here somewhere worse. So Paul says in Romans 12, 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. He's appealing. He's begging. He's saying, listen to the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Not a dead one, but living one. Live in a way sacrificially that honors the God of heaven. Live your life in a sacrificial way, holy and acceptable to God, which is how you worship God, is to live for him. He says, for which is your spiritual worship? Do not be conformed. Don't fall into the patterns of. Don't go along with the trends of our world. Don't just let what people think about you control how you think on this world. Because people who are earthly bound think differently than those who are spiritually bound. But he says, I ask you to do this, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual, that's how you worship spiritually. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when the thoughts of this world keep pouring in, we say no to those, and we say we're going to spend some time in the word of God, listen to what he's got to say. Lean heavily on his promises. Look forward to the things he's saying about us and receive the love he has for us and accept that he has redeemed us as Christians and we have a 
destiny in his presence. So he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We have a goal as Christians to become more Christ-like on a daily basis, not just to be born into the kingdom and just sit there as an infant spiritually, but to grow in our spiritual relationship with him, become strong in the word, become strong in his promises, be strong in our faith because the Lord is coming. And when he comes, he wants to find us faithful. In Isaiah 26 and verse 3, he says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. We want to unpack that. Isaiah says to God, he's speaking to God, that God keeps people in perfect peace whose mind is set, moored, tied to, involved in, handling aright the word of God. You keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed strong in you because that person trusts in you. If you want to be more to God, if you want to be tied to God, you want to be strong in the Lord, you've got to take your mind and set your mind on things above. Get it off of uh, the news. I see people quite often watching the news 24-7. And their minds are down here and they're worried about all the illegal secrecies that are going on in our world and all the dangers that are out there. And it would be better for us to spend the time thinking about the glory of God and the place we're going to to long for that place that God is making and providing for us and spend some time looking into the word of God so we'll know. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and in self-control. That is not my words. Those are written by Paul to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. For God gave us, he did it, a spirit, a spirit that's not filled with fear, but it's filled with power and love and then he gives us the ability through that power and love to have self-control, not to fly off the handle and boy, that's so hard, and not to do things we're not supposed to or think thoughts we're not supposed to. He gives us power, and if we plug in to that power, he will give us what we need to live a life that's pleasing to him. And I heard a long time ago, said it a couple of times, but back in the 60s, when your TV didn't work, you called the TV repairman. The TV repairman would come out to your house with his tools, and they said about 70 or 80% of the time when they got there, the problem with the TV is it came unplugged. That's what happens with Christians when they unplug from the Lord to God of heaven and nothing operates correctly. We really need to make sure we stay plugged into God. We set our minds. We don't just let our minds drift into the presence of God or drift into the word of God. We make a point to set our mind on things above Paul said in Colossians 2 and verse 8, and I'm reading a lot of scripture because I want God to speak to us this morning. He says, see to it, you do this on purpose, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophies and empty deceit according to the human traditions, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not ex according to Christ. Don't let the philosophies of our world or the threats of our world or the thinking of our world steal our faith from our relationship with the God of heaven. We have to do that on purpose. We have to decide. We're not going to let them steal our faith. We're not going to let them break us down. We're not going to let them put us in fear because we have a relationship with God that is eternal. In Philippians 4, 6, one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. Do not be anxious. Okay, my sermon's over. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, do this instead. In prayer. Spend some time in prayer. With supplication and with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Let your requests be made known to God. They won't be ignored. The passage goes on to say, And the peace of God, because you're praying, giving God thanks for what he's already doing for you and what he's going to do for you in the end time. By giving thanks to him, let your request be known to God, and he'll give you something right then and there. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. How someone define for me what transcending means. It's bigger, it's wider, it's deeper, it's richer, 
than you can even imagine. So let's put that back in. Do not be anxious about anything because you're not in charge and you can't change it. God's in charge. He is in charge and he can change it. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, every time you get a chance by prayer and supplication, which is asking God. And with thanksgiving, Lord, you're so good to us. Amen? Amen. That wasn't loud enough. And God is so good to us. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God at that point, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, not propaganda, you find the truth in the Word of God. The Word of God is true. But whatever is true, whatever is honorable, you don't get that on the news a lot. Whatever is just, that's fair and right. Whatever is pure, that comes from the Word of God. And from godly Christian friends who you get to spend some time with. Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, those are rare thoughts in our world today. If there is anything that's excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, set your mind on those things. Whatever, th uh, think about these things. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. It is a, a recipe for faith. It is a recipe for joy and peace. It's a recipe for a relationship with God so he can fill you from the inside with his own peace that passes all understanding. So in Philippians 2, verse 5, it says, have this mind among yourselves. This mind. We have a heart, soul, mind, and strength. Our heart and our soul are given to God, and because of that, we have this thing with our mind. We have to work with our mind because it spins, and we get all this stuff coming in from the outside. But we have to decide we're going to filter through that stuff and spend more time thinking about the things of God. But he says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Have it. You can have it if you want to. A mind that knows that your king of kings and lord of lords is the one in charge of your destiny. And the lord of lords and the king of kings who loves you has a place for you. And that he's preparing ahead of time for your journey when you go there. That when you arrive there, you will be in the exact space that you need to be in. So have this mind. Have these thoughts. Have this demeanor that you hold on to. Because you're trusting in the God who made the promises. And you can live in this world and be a shining light among those who are in panic because you have the answers to your destiny. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, Peter wrote, be sober-minded. That means not so much that you're not going to be drunk-minded, but he wants our minds to be sober, but strong, thinking the right thoughts on purpose by setting your mind on things above. Be sober-minded and then be watchful. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. Those who are weak-minded, those who haven't set their mind on things above, who don't have a savior they lean on and trust and look forward to being with. And the devil goes around and finds weak-minded people who have not set their heart, mind, soul, and strength on the God of heaven. And they're falling apart around us. And he's devouring them. Don't be that way. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around. He's out there roaring like a lion, seeking someone to devour. Don't let it be you. In 2 Corinthians 5, and verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I'm in the Lord Jesus Christ, not because I'm good, but because he is. And if you're in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can choose to understand and to claim this verse. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone away, that which you've broken in the past and have disobeyed in the past and have chosen poorly in the past and thought ugly in the past is gone. Because if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Not will come, but has come. So we need to take our mind off of 
failures of the past and put our mind on successes of the future and the relationship we have with Christ and be filled with joy so the world will know that we have a Savior that we believe in. We have an answer to their struggles. We have hope beyond hope because we know that our Lord loves us. Psalm 119. Apostle, I mean Apostle, <laughs> David the King, he wrote this in Psalm 119. You have to look a long ways at the big, big chapter. But verse 15, David said, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Which is a beautiful thing. David said, I can look at everything. You know, the news, the, the advertisements, the people around me, the, the world that's falling apart, and all the evil stuff. I can look at all that chaos like I was looking at that tornado that came to California yesterday. Or I can choose to look into the face of my Savior. And if I get distracted by a tornado warning, which I did, I got distracted. We were in Walmart and we had a lady standing there and Jessica asked, are you a Christian? And she said, yes. She said, well, can we pray with you? And we stood in Walmart right in the middle of everyone prayed. It was so cool. But it's, it's something about that. He says, I will meditate on your precepts. I will fix my eyes on your ways. God is in charge. If today is the day, that's good. If tomorrow's the day, that's good. If he wants me to stay a hundred years, that's good. Because time will go away one day and we'll be in his presence. Do not be conformed then to the world, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the renewal of your mind. Our mind has been set on the things of this earth. We have to transform it by changing the direction of our thinking processes and give our hearts and our minds to Jesus. Heart, mind, soul, and strength. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. It can be renewed. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and even perfect. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We don't instruct him. We don't understand him completely. But he gives us this little chip. I guess that's the technology for today. But he gives us a little chip. It goes in our brain. And we can think his thoughts. We can love the things he loves. We can choose the things he chooses. We can on purpose, because we set our mind on things above, we can be like him more every day. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, love this passage. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, he says do this. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any praiseworthy things, think about it. I choose today to think about the heaven above. I think it's awesome to spend some time planning on the vacation I get to live in forever. I want to pack the brain and the heart and the soul with the things I need on the other side. I need to do it more. And more each day, getting myself ready for the time I get to go and be with him, and less about the things that are going away. 1 Peter 1 and verse 13, therefore preparing your minds for action. In this world, God has sent us here to be his, ad, uh, I just almost said adversaries, to be his, his uh, I lost the word, the people who represent him. Ambassadors. To be as ambassadors in this world. God would like to save every lost soul on the planet. He sent his son to purchase their forgiveness and grace and mercy. And he gives us his spirit so we can be his ambassadors in a dark world. We need to be speaking out, saying things, being an example, showing joy that even in these dark times we have a savior that's coming. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be sober-minded. Set your hope. That's that gap grappling hook in heaven. Set your hope on things above. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. In Matthew 22, verse 37, it says, And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. I'm pausing because I want it to sink in. With all your soul, your psyche, the person that you are. And then with all of your mind. I love you, Lord. I just love you, Lord. I want to love you better. I want to love you more. I want to love you more often. I want to love you deeper. I want to get closer to you. I don't want to be without you. I want to look for you to come. I don't want to long for the time I get to live in your house. I, I want to let go of the things of this world and set my eyes and my heart and my thinking in that place. 1 John 4, verse 18, and I'll end with this one. There is now, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. But praise the Lord God of heaven that those of us who belong to him who bear his name, who have been washed clean from our sinful ways and been redeemed by his blood, belong to him. And he has a home for us just waiting. For her fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love, but <coughs> casts out that fear. And the Lord Jesus loves us with perfect love. If you're not a Christian this morning and yesterday's into the world experience shook you, it might be just a reminder that we need to be right with God. So I'm going to ask you to set your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit on the Lord Jesus Christ and make him your number one. He wants to redeem you. If you're not redeemed, you need to be and you need to be this morning. And if you are redeemed, he just wants you to remember who you are. His children. If you need prayers this morning, I need to respond to this invitation. Just come and we sing together.